Carly Cronin, Sydney Fisher, and Shannon Reagan talking about Francisco de Goya's um, series, Procession of Flagellants, the Inquisition Tribunal, and the Madhouse. Okay, Let's see. Here, we, here we go. Mm. Me start or you? Okay, so the first painting in the series is the Procession of the Flagellants um, from the 1800s. When you first look at this, you can definitely see in the foreground that um, there's a group of men in uh, white, and they are wearing pointed hats, which definitely tells us that they're Roman Catholic. They're also uh, whipping their backs, their bared backs in penitence, and their backs are bleeding. So um, We see a life-size statue in the background of Nuestra Señora de la Soledad, um, also, we see the crucifixion of Christ and the uh, esse homo. We see uh, a group um, of um, religious people. How do I say that? We see. We see also um, when you look around. There's not. Oh wait, hold on. Okay. Other than the procession of the men in white, we also see um, people who are. It's implied that they're religious. They're kneeling um, to. Uh, what it looks like some sort of religious figure, a statue. They're kneeling towards a... They're, they're wearing black hoods. Mm -hmm. um, a man on the right is also impaled, and are, they're all carrying banners, crosses, and lamps. We see um, a contrast between light and dark by uh, shown through the blood that's flowing out of the white garments that the um, figures in white are wearing. And uh, they're very well characterized and individualized. Um, we see that... The characters in the foreground are white, they're light characters, but then they're surrounded by figures in dark black, which also shows that contrasting of light and dark. Yes, um, also you see the background is left as an anonymous crowd of faithful, dimly lit, uh, is, it's faithful and dimly lit under a cloudy blue sky. Mm -hmm. So um, the two zones are divided by a dark wall, possibly symbolizing the heavy weight of religion. The holy image of the Virgin is silhouetted against the dark wall of the church, and the blood-stained figures of the flagellants stand out from and dominate the procession. Uh, they... The uh, figures also look defeated, and that kind of also um, indicates the um, importance or um, holiness of the figure that they're worshipping. Yeah, uh, Goya did not like fanaticism and believed in realistic reportage, so... Um, in fact, he's uh, known as a hatred of fanaticism, and um, he's always the um, enemy of irrational tendencies, um, especially religious superstition. Uh, he painted the world in which he lived and painted it in the terms of uncompromising realism. This is the Inquisition Tribunal. Uh, this was made in the 1800s. Um, the Inquisition was introduced in Spain in the 15th century as a form of court run by the church. It was intended to protect the monarchy. Um, the last public auto de fe was staged in Madrid, and uh, the series is showing some of the most terrible aspects of the 19th century Spanish life, which we can definitely see through the dark colors. Um, and it reflects the customs which the liberal, um, the liberals in Spain, um, and it's interesting because Goya was actually a liberal, um, how they wished to reform, but um, whose reform was opposed by the absolutist policy of Ferdinand the uh, Seventh of Spain. Um, this painting could actually be seen as propaganda, and that could have gotten Goya in a lot of trouble back in those days. Um, the threat of being burned at stake was symbolized by the pointed hats worn by the accused. Yeah, um, um, every figure in the foreground is light in uh, this piece, and they're very individualized and well-characterized, which is a lot like how um, Goya uh, characterized and individualized the uh, group of men in white in um, the previous piece that we discussed. Um, the background is shadowed. It's occupied by an anonymous mass of people shut in by darkness and a claustrophobic gothi gothic architecture. Um, it kind of um, is another is another example of his contrast of light and dark. Um, I'm guessing the symbolism in this piece is along the lines of constant controversy in the world. Um, you can see there's a lot of different feelings in the room. A lot of different 
you can see different classes because you see the men in the front in, you know, upper class clothing, but then there's people in um, what the lower class would wear, more um, rugged, yeah. um, beat down clothes. So the last piece we're going to be talking about is the Madhouse, which was also made in the 1800s. Um, the Madhouse depicts a mental asylum. Uh, this, it's a psychiatric institution, and I guess that was a hot topic for the Spanish Enlightenment. Uh, this painting um, could be meant as a denunciation of the then current practice in that area. Um, but if it's not, Goya was uh, always attracted to representing madness, deformity, or perversion, which we can also see in his other pieces that we discussed. Um, Some of the figures can also be interpreted as um, a gallery of parodies of powerful figures in society, such as clergy uh, or the army. Um, some of them kind of have war poses in this, which we can see if they were, you know, militant figures. Um, there's one with, it looks like an Indian hat on to the left. Um, yeah. And so that also gives off, um, like, war. There's just so much happening in the painting. It, it sort of takes your eye from um, the upper left side down to the lighter bottom of the right side of the canvas. Um, okay, so um, there's a lot of individualized and characterized figures. Um, each one is, is different, and um, this shows humanity. Um, it clearly marks poor victims of marginalization and rejection. There's a very claustrophobic atmosphere, which is common to all three of the, the pieces. Um, yeah, the only light is coming from the barred window, which is high up on the wall, so um, it's clearly meant to repress the figures below. <laughs> this has been a sufficiently oh, yeah. awkward project by Carly Cronin, Susan <laughs> Reagan, and Sydney Fisher. <laughs>